Okay, so on to the poppers. Now you've got these in your pack. These are Prim Jersey No Sew poppers. And in the pack you get 10 pairs. Um, and then you also get the tool for pressing them. I'd suggest working on a nice sturdy set surface, like a, a kitchen or dining table. And on top of that, you can use a chopping block as well. Um, you're gonna need a hammer. And you can attach these using the tool that comes with the pack. If you happen to have a pair of these pliers, um, these are the Prim Love Vario pliers, but any pliers should, should do the trick as well. Um, these will make the task a bit easier. Um, if you're doing a lot of poppers, I would say these are great. Um, they come with lots of different attachments for different types of poppers and you can use them for so many different things that they're really good to have. Um, but you don't need them, they're not essential for this project. So I've got my tape measure, I've got my spare bit of um, grow grain and my spare bit of cable fabric that was left over from when I went, made my headband. So if you want, and what I would suggest doing, you've got 10 in your pack, you've got 10 of these, so you're probably only gonna need to use five for your poncho, so you've got a few to play with. Do a little practice run, so watch what how I do it, and then do a practice run first on here just to get your head round it, and then you can move on to attaching your poppers onto your garment once you've done that. So here's my, my poncho, there's the fold, there's my grow grain, there's the hem. I'm gonna start off by marking the positions of where I want each popper to go. So I've got the grow grain tape there, that's where the outy bits are gonna go. And then I've got my tape there, that's where the inny bits are gonna go and they're gonna stick together like that. Um, lovely, okay, let's move that in a bit. Just so that I can see what I'm doing. So within my sewn rectangle, I want to space out five um, poppers. So I'm gonna use my um, tape measure and my pen. So I want my first popper to sit sort of, in fact, if you get one, you can like lay them out. That's a good idea to do. So I've got, f I need five, so I want them to sort of sit one at the top and one at the bottom. And then the other three are going to space sort of evenly in between. And I use silver on the oatmeal, and then I use kind of a, a coppery colour on the um, on the warmer colours. I've got a few different colours of this kit. So those ones I want to set at either end. I can just make a little dot with my heat erasable pen or you could use chalk okay so I can see that that's where my first and last one go you just want that to do them to look quite even and between there actually let's use my ruler it's a bit easier so from that first dot to the last dot there that's 16.5 centimeters Get the calculator out. <laughs> 16.5 divided by four. 4.125. So your poppers are gonna be roughly spaced at four centimeters. So the first one is a centimeter in from that edge of that seam. And then we go four, four centimeters. Four centimeters. Four centimeters. Or you could do your four times table. And then it's just over four, so I'm just going to come just to the side of there. Now yours might be slightly different if your gap here is a bit longer or a bit shorter. If you've moved it about a bit, that's fine. Let's see how that looks. I've got one, two, three, four, five. So they look pretty good. They look nicely spaced out. Four centimetres is a good gap to have between them. That pen comes off with heat, so once I've put them all in place, I'll just put a bit of steam on with the iron and that will get rid of it. So I'm gonna do these first, and I'm gonna use the male parts for these. So the male part of the popper looks like that. So that's how it looks on the re reverse side, and that's how it looks. And we're gonna need five of them. I'm going to do these one at a time and for the first one I'm going to use the tool that comes with the kit. So you get um, a 
folded in half a bit like this and you get these two white attachments they snap into either end and they line up like so and they're going to squeeze the popper in place and what you're going to do is use a hammer to drive it home. Now start off by taking your ring and you can see that you've got some sharp spikes on that side and you push it through from the right side through to the grow grain side. So this is the outside of your garment and it's within the stitched area and on the inside those spiky bits just poke through. So can you see how those spiky bits are poking through? There you are. Reminds me of the hive test for, that you used to have for the BCG. <laughs> so you've got this ring of spikes. Then pop that prim um, outie pop a bit on the top. And then this tool kind of hugs it. So that bottom ring kind of fits. You've got this sort of recess here where it fits. Both sides are the same. So there's not a right and wrong side. So you just close that. And what you've got now is you've got the, your fabric, your grey green tape and both parts of your popper sandwiched in there. Uh, and this is where we use our hammer and tongs. There we go. It's like hammer and tongs, isn't it? Because this blue one is a bit like tongs. So just be really careful. You don't need to ham hammer it very hard. Let's see what's the best health and safety way of doing this. Keep my hand out of the way. So I'll hold that down there. And there we are. That's driven that home. On the outside I've got the ring. And on the inside I've got my popper. Beautiful. So I'm going to do that for all five. And for the second one, just to show you, and just because I don't think my family want me hammering right now because Tim's on an important phone call and the boys are watching Deadly Dinosaurs. I'm now going to do this one using my pliers instead. So there you go, same technique. Whoops, pop that through. So I've got my pen mark that I made in the middle of that ring there. Pop that through with the spiky bits coming out. Grab my outie bit and that sits on there. Now with the pliers, do you remember these bits that I put in the, the blue um, tongs? These actually just fit exactly the same into your pliers. Right, I'll have to do that again. <laughs> so I'm gonna poke that through When we're making our sandwiches later, everyone will be like, where's the chopping board? Aha, it is in the sewing room. <laughs> right, put that in there. Close that down, so that is now sandwiched. A little bit of um, sleight of hand to get it all lined up correct. Give it a good old squeeze. And there's my popper. The ring on the outside and the outy bit there. So there you go, That's, those are the two different techniques for doing that. There is another tool you can get which I've not used before which is looks like a tripod. So if you've got one of those at home you can use that as well. Um, personally my favourite are the pliers because they're quick and they're not noisy. And each one that you do, just before you squeeze it just double check positioning because I tell you what, once these are in, they're in. <laughs> you can't get them out. Um, and you can get different fixtures in here that you pop in and pop out. And whenever you buy the poppers, they come with um, the fixtures that you need. Right, so I'm gonna carry on to the end um, and then we're going to do exactly the same on the other side. So there's all my first set of poppers done. 
and I'll just get rid of those marks by just putting an iron over those. And I now want to do my receiving parts of the popper. So with everything nicely lined up, I need to now decipher my position on here. And I can just get that from, from these. So I can just sort of see that that needs to be there. But another way that I kind of do this sometimes, it might work, it might not. I just color in a little bit. And this works really well with chalk as well. And then make sure that it's where I want it to be and it's all lined up. Bring it over and press it. And hopefully, yeah, I've now got colour them in again but that ink has kind of transferred over from one side to the other so I can now see exactly where I want those other halves of my poppers to go. Now let's have a look. So now I need the same again. Uh, five rings. One, two, three, four, five and I need there we go and I need five of the receiving parts of the popper and they look like that. One, two, three, four, five. Now, in this instance, you want to push this through here and then your receiving part is gonna go there so that it poppers like that. So your ring on this case is going here. I can hear a robot approaching. <laughs> right now, here's how I transfer those markings. I take a pin and I just push that through here. And then I can transfer that there. Do the same again, so just pop a pin through transfer that mark just helps to get it on the right side there just helps I think. there we go so I can see my mark there that I made once again, that's going to sit in the centre of that stitch line. Let's see, is that about right? Okay. And there's that black mark in the middle of there. Actually, move it down a little bit. It's worth taking your time, even if it means fiddling about a bit, to get these right. Because like I say, once they're on, they're on. There's no getting away from it. Um, and these sit this way so that's the side that's going to face up and that's the side that's going to face down so the side that faces down has the two rings and then the side that faces up has that sort of daisy looking bit in the middle um, if not sure do a test one first and then um, that will help you stuck to my thumb. It's really easy. You don't need very strong hands to do this because I've got really weak hands. <laughs> there you go. So that's the first popper done. And you can see how the front is going to fold over the back and that's going to sit nice and flat on your shoulder. If you were doing this with the little tool, it's exactly the same, just you're squeezing it and hammering it. Um, it's exactly the same technique. I'm just gonna go ahead and do all of these and we'll end up with all my poppers done. Um, and that is our project finished. So it goes that way round. And then I 
use my pliers to squeeze it into place. And I can see, if you want to just double check, I can see that I've got that right. Again, check, check, check before committing, squeezing those pliers because once they're done, they're done. <laughs> no stitch on picker is going to ever help you to unpick a press snap. Whoops. And that's my all my press studs, all my poppers in place. So they do up, hopefully. <laughs> so much fun doing these when you get going. Probably you don't say that the first time you do them, but because <laughs> uh, it's a bit nerve wracking. But yeah, they're pretty good. And that's our poncho finished. So well done, good job. And we're finished our lovely cosy and soft cable knit poncho. You can wear it over a jumper, you can wear it over a jacket as an extra layering piece. It's such a nice um, thing to have. It also makes a lovely gift as well. Um, if you've got any questions, as always, pop me a comment below. Um, don't forget to subscribe to Flying Bobbins Tutorials. I'll be continuing in the cosy theme by showing you next how to make these lovely um, Nordic style slipper booties and matching slippers or coordinating slippers I should say you're definitely not going to wear both at the same time but these will come as a pack um, so you can get anything that you need for that from flyingbobbins.com you can also get anything you need for this kit as well so do take a look thanks again happy sewing and I'll see you next time